Hey, Tanner. It's me, your brother, Todd. And I am here to teach Tanner to cook cast iron. Ah, Again, zero effects, just pointing and making mouth noises. I'm a working man. I'm a husband, I'm a father, work long hours, multiple jobs. Something that I find useful to have in the house is cooked ground meat. I like to just cook up some generic meat, throw it in some Tupperware, keep it in the fridge. That way it can be used to make sandwiches or pasta sauce or sloppy joes or tacos or any number of, of other items. But just having that cooked ground meat ready to go is something very handy. And it's a perfect chore for your cast iron skillet. For today's project, you will need the following items. Ground meat. Your metal spatula, your handkerchief, a colander that fits into a bowl, spices. Today I am using garlic powder, salt, paprika, black pepper, and umami. Your reserved bacon grease. And of course, your cast iron skillet. As per usual, step one, light your stove. Put your pan on that stove. Get that pan nice and hot. Remember the rule, hot pan, cold oil. Oh, look at my finger. And of course, while that's heating up, it's time for the beer of the week. Let's see what we've got in the fridge. This week, we're going to be drinking the Flyjack Hazy IPA from Firestone. It's a lighter beer, 96 calories. Why not? It's at this point in other shows when they would do a full-on review of the beer. I thought about that. That ain't my style. I'm just gonna enjoy it. All right, our pan is hot. Let's throw a spoonful of this beautiful, beautiful bacon grease in there. And let that bad boy melt. Now, at this point, I realize I've added too much. So, I'm gonna take it out. You only need enough to coat the bottom of the pan, especially since the meat we have is going to create some of its own grease. We're gonna add our meat. What we have here is a two pound blend of beef and pork. I like that, I like the pork flavor, but uh, the beef still gives it a little bit of, uh, I don't know, beefiness, for lack of a better word. This is a good uh, it's a good quality product. Also, I use two pounds because for my family and my needs, one pound is just never quite enough when you consider lunches and dinners. So, open this guy up. Drop him into your skillet. Listen to him sizzle, will ya? It's at this point that I should point out, you don't actually drop the meat into the skillet that will splatter the fat and the grease. It'll get in your clothes, it'll burn, and it's hard to clean up. You wanna place it in there gently, as I did. All right, well that's starting to cook up. Add a little salt. Some paprika. Black pepper. Umami, this stuff is fantastic. It ends a, it, it lends a really 
complex, rich taste to everything. It's it's really, really good. It's like a buck ninety nine at Trader Joe's or something like that. Garlic powder. The old workhorse. Which is currently unopened. Let's try that again. And of course, garlic powder. I like a lot of garlic. That's up to you. All right, we got that going. That was a mistake. Use your handkerchief to hold onto the handle. Easily manipulate. You just actually get in there, break it up off the bottom. All right? Keep it from sticking and searing, which it should not be doing if you have your skillet properly seasoned and a little touch of oil thrown in to begin with. Eventually, you're not going to need that extra oil at the beginning. I like to use it because it just sort of, it gets everything going in the right direction. Look at that. Good looking meat, huh? We've broken it up. Give it a couple flips. Cooking up real nice. While that's cooking, I want to talk a little bit about spices. Normally at this point, in my normal day-to-day -day cooking, I would have used Old Bay. The problem is, I can't find Old Bay. I don't know if there's a shortage of it due to coronavirus. I don't know if everybody has been turned on to the fact that Old Bay is awesome. Old Bay is an awesome, awesome spice. It's uh, paprika, garlic, uh, salt, celery salt, uh, something else. It's great. It is a great spice, and I would have used that uh, in addition to, or in, 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 instead of. Yeah. Now, back to the program. Now, right, you see how that guy's cooking up? There are, of course, other options, other things you can be doing here. Sometimes I like to put Worcestershire in it. Sometimes I like to put red wine in it, or bourbon, or rum. Sometimes I like to go with just salt. Sometimes I like to add cumin. Sometimes I like to add taco seasoning. Either way, you're going to use the same techniques regardless. You want to make sure you add the spices while it's cooking. That way, the spices cook into the meat. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Almost there. Ta-da! What do you think? Looks good to me. So, we're going to turn off the stove top, and we're going to drain the meat. This is why you want to have a colander that fits inside of a bowl. When you drain the meat, you don't want all the grease to go down the drain. Not only is it bad for the environment, it's really, really bad for your pipes. With the colander in the bowl, and I put it in the sink in case I make a mess, I am now going to drain the meat. Dump it into the colander so, it's, so it drains out. Yeah, look at that skillet. That's beautiful. That's a good seasoning job. See, we've dumped all the meat out. It's drained. It's drained. We give it a little shaky shake. 
Put it back in this cast iron skillet and return it to the stove top. You'll notice the stove top is off. That's because we're done. It's that simple. You can use that meat for tons and tons of things. However, you're going to want to wait until it cools in order before you pack it up or eat it because it's pretty hot right now. Also, do not, under any circumstances, after you dump the meat, just dunk your cast iron skillet into the water or run it under cold water because it will crack and break, and that will ruin a cast iron skillet. Cast iron skillets can be very forgiving. You can correct a lot of errors with them, but once you crack it, that's it. It is no longer a skillet. Dig? So, on that note, you wait for the meat to cool, you pack it up. You wait for the cast iron skillet to cool, not cold, because then it gets crusty and you got to warm it up again. You know, the, the grease all settles and congeals. But it let it cool down so you can, you can touch it. Turn the water on warm. Run it, under the, run it under the running water. Wipe it down with a rag. And you're good to go. You can re-season it if you want. Sometimes I like to do that. Just throw a little dollop of oil in there and let it cook down until it starts to smoke. Uh, but that's it. You made meat. Thanks for watching, Tanner. I hope this was a useful video for you. That is the third video I have made now for teaching Tanner to cook cast iron, and I'm having a really good time with it. I hope you're enjoying it too. And for everyone else that's watching, thanks. One more thing before I put it away for the night. I forgot about the grease in the sink. Okay, so you've saved it in a bowl. A bowl? One more thing before I put this all away for the night. I forgot about the grease in the sink. So, after it is cooled down, you can take that bowl full of grease and dump it in the trash, pour it away, whatever you gotta do to it. There might be a grease recycling thing. I don't know how that works. I literally just throw it away. Because I don't know what else to do with it.